I'm pleased to announce the next speaker, Mikhail Hackinson. Um, Mikhail is a technology expert with focus on web, IoT, cloud computing, integration, and is a nine-time MVP for cloud integration. He's an internationally recognized speaker and author with contributors that include articles and presentations at industry conferences. During this session, Mikhail will be taking, talking about IoT, common patterns and practices. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikhail Hackinson. I'm Mikhail Hackinson, and I'm going to take on where, uh, from where Sam uh, was before. So I'm going to just continue for what Sam said. IoT is really an extension into IoT, uh, into integration. It's pretty much the same thing. I'm going to talk about IoT, and first up is uh, what is IoT. Microsoft talks about IoT suite, and what is that? And it's really about the IoT hub and any kind of services that is related to IoT hub, such as uh, stream analytics, machine learning, and everything else that you would put in that context. Uh, when it comes to IoT hub, to, to explain what it is, it's kind of your private event hub and your private service bus topic, like one topic and one subscription per device that you have. Now, that is not technically true, but it kind of helps. That, that analogy helps you understand what it is. Uh, it's scaled to you know, any, pretty much any, any number of device, and you have per device authentication with it. Um, there's also some, some that, that different Azure a little bit from the competitors such as Amazon and IBM. It's the fact that you have quite a lot of different ways to communicate from the device to the cloud and the other way around. Um, if you think about it in terms of integration and BizTalk, like I know you love, uh, we have you know, one-way communication, we have two-way communication, we have synchronous and asynchronous communication, uh, and we have receive port and we have uh, send port. So how does that all relate to uh, Azure IoT and how do we communicate with the, the, uh, the, the, the devices and the cloud? And that's pretty much what I'm going to focus on today. Um, Azure is also kind of unique in a way that they, they support quite a lot of different ways to, to communicate in terms of transport. And I'm going to, uh, at the end of the talk, get some, um, talk a little bit about that as well. So IoT Hub, you have not only IoT Hub, you have a set of devices. And those could be IP-capable devices or non-IP-capable devices. And um, the non-IP-capable devices are not really IoT or things because they're not on the internet. But they generally, like Sam was talking about, PLCs and those legacy kind of devices, where we generally have kind of a field gateway to use to get them connected to, uh, to the hub to send messages and receive messages. From here, we, uh, we, had, we had to take two paths, basically, one hot path and one cold path. A uh, cold path would generally be when you just, just go and persist those, those, that data later on for later analysis. And you have the uh, hot path where you would uh, analyze the messages in flight, uh, typically using stream analytics and other tools. And you also have the hot path where you forward those messages into logic apps and this talk and uh, Azure function as such to, 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 to act on them uh, immediately. Now the scenarios that we generally see is the typical one is um, uh, the telemetry where we actually just throw a lot of data up in the cloud and that's the demos that you've seen so many times before. And you also have the other one where we call it inquiries. Um, inquiries could be um, that the device at some point need an additional data, such as if it's bound to location, that might be that it, when it changes that location, it requires more data, and it will request that from the cloud. You also have the notion of uh, commands. That's when we actually send a command to a device to actually do something or change something on the device or query the device for some reason. So that could be like if you want to switch it on and off or change the configuration, basically. You also have um, notifications where we just push this data to maybe all devices, but in most cases we, we query for a number of devices and we push notifications that way. That could be like if you have a, a vendor machine, that could be a new price list or something like that. So when we talk about communication with the IoT hub, if the 
devices, any number of devices want to send messages up, they will send that to your event hub within your IoT hub. And from there, you can build an application that would offload those messages and make something useful out of it. Or you can use stream analytics uh, and point that to the IoT hub to get the inbound messages from there. And then you set up a number of outbound channels for uh, where you want to, that door, uh, data to go, uh, such as you know, uh, CosmoDB, maybe a logic app, whatever it might be. When you want to send uh, messages um, to a device, um, you would have an application and we use this kind of service bus topic to send it to. Again, it's not a topic really, but it's better to understand it that way. And that way we can target that message for a specific device. Another way to do it is, uh, which is not that well known, is the device twin. I think it's quite new or it was released last year. So the thing of a twin is you, every device have a twin and the twin is, uh, is configured in the cloud and every twin has a, uh, a set of configuration or a state. And the state could be just a number of tags that we can use to query it. So it could be like this is building four or you know, any way for you to categorize your, your devices. But it can also have a desired state. And that is pretty much up to you to decide what that state is. It generally describes your device or the machine or whatever it is that it's attached to. So you can have a state, desired state for a number of RPMs or, or you know, should be on or off or whatever it might be. And then if the device is online, it will receive that message immediately or that state, updated state immediately, and it can act on it and send back a, a, a state would be um, uh, a reported state. So if it says, well, I want you to run with 1,000 RPM, the device could report back saying, well, I'm now at 800 or 900. And eventually, hopefully, the desired state and reported state will be, become the same. Now, it's only the desired state can only be changed or updated or created from the cloud, from the IoT hub, whereas the device is the only one who can actually update the, desired, uh, the reported state. So in terms of exchange patterns here, so we have events, that's the telemetry data that is just pushed up. And you have uh, something called messaging, where you're sending messages from the cloud to, to the devices. Again, one device or many. And then you have methods, which is a way for you to expose a, a method uh, from the device. And we can call that method directly from, from the cloud. This could be quite useful when two devices, you want to send a, a command from one device to another. It will go through the hub, but it's a useful way to do it. And you also then have state, as I was talking about. So I will be demoing most of the, or all of these. With this demo, I have a simulated, uh, simulated device and a simulated, um, let's see if I can move this a little bit, a simulated sensor as well. So I'm going to use there's code, there it is. So for my first demo, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. So the simulator here is, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not really a random just number. It takes into account the outside temperature and the inside temperature and it will just, if there's nothing to affect it, it will just drop. But it won't just drop in a linear way, it will sort of fade out because the differences between the outside temperature and the inside temperature will decrease, of course. So if I run this sample, um, you will see something look like this. So we have a node app. So it starts up at, I think it's about 25 degrees and then it continuously just goes, goes down. So this is the, the simulator that I will use throughout my demos. So for, uh, to actually send messages to the cloud, I have this demo where the first thing I do, scroll down here a little bit, I have a, an object called settings, that's where I keep my connection strings and stuff. And then I have this thermometer, the same thing I had in the previous demo. And just set up some, uh, let's call it factory classes for message and client. So I can later on uh, create my client here. So I do that using my connection string and the protocol. 
So for this demo, I will be using MQTT as a protocol. I have other options too, and I will talk more about them at the end. So after I've been uh, connected, just let me clean this up a little bit. I start the thermometer at um, once every second, and it will just receive that message from the thermometer and use the send event, again, send it to the event hub and take it from there. So if I save this one first. I am connected, I start sending this, uh, these messages. Now from, from here, I go into stream analytics. Uh, let me show me you that one as well. So I have, um, this is my IoT hub, let me just stop that one so we restart it later again. So I have my IoT hub, I have one device. And in the, uh, I also have the stream analytics where it's picking off messages from my IoT hub and forward all of those messages to two destinations, Power BI and uh, Service Bus, which I'm gonna use later in my later demos. So if we run this again, and if we go into uh, Power BI, I have a dashboard is empty, should be able to it takes about five seconds before it to pick up messages. I pick my stream, my data set. How I want to present it. I set my date time as the axis and the value is gonna be my temperature. So the first, it's actually started here and now you can see it fades out, okay? So now we're getting all that data up to the hub and offloading it from stream analytics and pushing it into uh, Power BI as a source. All right. So the degrees outside is about 10 degrees, so that's the lowest temperature we'll go to. Okay. So that's the demo for the first one. Now, when you talk about what, you, what else you can do, you can, offload other, uh, you can offload the data to other sources as well. And in this case, we're gonna do with uh, the queue. And what I wanna do here is actually sending messages back to, um, to the device. So to do that, I need to do a couple of things. First of all, we, um, we need to enable us for, to actually receive messages. So my client, same client as is open up here, we also say that I'm interested in receiving messages as well, and all I'm doing here is just print out a warning. The service bus queue is up here, so I have uh, a, a topic which I write into, this topic, and I have two subscriptions one uh, state and one warnings. And right now we're gonna look at the warnings one. And going back to my function, which is actually the one picking up the messages from that queue, or topic or subscription actually to even. Oh. So that would be send warnings. So in the previous demo, I was using a package called Device SDK, and now we're gonna use the Azure IoT Hub SDK up here, and that one is the service side uh, SDK. And it looks very similar. I create a client up here, again, from a connection string, and I do open, and if all goes, goes good, we should land over here. So I'm receiving the queue message from Stream Analytics, create a new message, and I just do client send. So this is where I send message to the client, and the device is actually in, uh, you know, the destination is in the call for send. And when I do that, again, come back to the code here, I'm supposed to receive the message over here. If we run the demo again, 
that one. This one here. Um, that's all the warnings that's coming in. So now we're dropping in temperature, and when we get a certain threshold, we start should start receiving warnings. So here now the warnings is coming in, and I should have pointed that out in the. Uh, in the function here that in, in time I get a warning up here, I'm sending the, the, uh, the message. So now I'm just sending warnings all the time. We're not acting on them. Uh, we're just receiving a bunch of warnings. Right? Doesn't really make any sense. But what I could do in this case is actually taking an action on that warning, um, perhaps setting a, a thermostat or something to control the, act, the um, air conditioning or something like that. So that leads me to the, to the next demo where we actually have a thermostat. And I just want to point out at this point why that wouldn't be a good practice. So if you think of we sending up warning or we sending up um, uh, information from the thermometer, the temperatures, and we're taking an action that if it's outside a certain threshold, we want to send a warning down to the device and act on it. So if we had also a thermostat on that device, uh, we could uh, set the temperature of, say, the air condi condition. Now, what happens if I have an outage, a power outage, where the device and the air condition goes down, and then later on it comes up again? It's likely that the air condition then will default back to its machine settings, which might be something totally different from what I have. So this case would be much better to use state. So what we want to do now is saying, I'm going to use another function and actually set the state of the uh, device instead to be on or off. So if you look at the portal and you go into the uh, device explorer, I only have one device here, and up here I have this device twin. So this will be a JSON document describing the state of the device. So up here you have a set of properties that is the desired state, where it says this is going to be uh, on, so let's set that to off just for the demo. And then later down here, I also have the reported state, and I again I can have different tags to describe my my device. So this time we're going to send that message to another uh, another function. And again, I'm picking up for, from a subscription. I'm uh, getting the connection string and creating my, uh, to later create my, uh, my device. But the first thing I do, I check if the, this, the current temperature is outside the accepted values, which would be plus 25 or plus 15. If it, if it isn't, uh, out, uh, if it's not an acceptable temperature, I get the twin. And after getting the twin, I can then uh, receive the state. And everything from that here are my custom whatever I wanted to, to call it. So I check the state of the thermostat. And then I'm checking if it should be on or off. And last thing I do here, I actually check, check so that it's different. So it's a different state than it was before. And if it is, I update, um, I update the standard, send the update. Which, well, I'll save it, and that will send the update to the device. I also want to take a check on the stream analytics and the query in between. So the first demo I did, I simply just sent everything. This was the first demo that we were running. And this one actually takes the average temperature over a sliding window of three seconds. So I don't want any small spikes. Well, three seconds is pretty small, but you can think of this as a longer uh, period of time. So in this case, if it's uh, more than three seconds on average over a time period of three seconds, that's when I'm going to send a message to the queue. Here's the from. That would be my source. And to my topic would be my destination. So with that running, let's look at the clients. This one is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is here, I now have a, a thermostat as well. 
I'm importing the same packages. I'm still using MQTT. I get my connection string and I open my client. If all goes well, I get my twin from the client and now I also can listen to any changes on the desired state. And if that comes in, I can set the temperature on the thermostat and I can act, put it on or off, switch it on or off depending on what the state is. As I did in previous demo, I also send all the information, all the uh, temperatures to the cloud, to the IoT hub, and that's where it goes into stream analytics and to my, um, to my queue and to my function. All right. So this will be demo two. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong window. So I expect to get some, so we, immediately when we start up, we can see we get this state that is said is to be off, and now we can see the temperatures are now dropping. Make this a little bit bigger. And there it goes beyond that temperature, that threshold, and we start putting it on again, and now the temperatures goes up. Now in reality, I'm showing here every second, every second here in reality would be 10 minutes, so that's why we're dropping even below zero, even if I only ex I actually sent the notification on 15 degrees, it's just because we're running it so fast now. So it will go up and down, and eventually we will see something in the portal that, um, actually in the, where is that, here. So now it will go up and down. Again, if the time was longer, you would have much more even temperature. That's one way to use state. I'm gonna shut that off. So the last thing I will show you is, is the, um, the device method, which is also very useful in some scenarios. So in this case, I'm having a custom app. And again, I'm just gonna use the Node app, but this could be your Logic app or whatever it might be. And then Logic App will uh, call a method on the device that you have defined. So we define that and it's a request response thing, so we, we get a response back to the, uh, to the hub. So in this case, I'm just gonna query for the temperature right now. And it could be useful in scenarios where maybe you only get the temperature like once an hour, and you wanna take an action on that. And when you actually, by the time you're taking the action, you might want to check that the temperature is still outside uh, the accepted values. But again, it could also be something you send down some configuration changes or whatever you want to do. To enable methods, if we go back to demo one here, I can remove this part, just saying on device method. So it's the same client, on device method, and whatever name we want to give our method. So this would be the one that would be used from the cloud. And in this case, we will just get the current te temperature and send a respond message 200 on the response object that we get in. I also have a, my application that we're actually calling. So again, this one uses the Azure IoT Hub SDK, the service SDK with that key and uh, create the client, set the target device is gonna be device one, and here's the payload that I send in. So I have a method name, that will be the method, and whatever payload I wanna send in, um, and then invoke device method, sending in those parameters. And if I have a successful result, I will get my result in this, uh, in this callback, and I will print out just the, the JSON uh, object from that. All right. So with that going, I'm going to call, get called to it, and you can see I can now query for that one. Right now it's going below zero, and you can see the result coming back here with minus one. So this will be in real time kind of queries that I do to my device, okay?
So lastly, I want to mention, uh, mention the protocols. So the most common one is MQTT across the, the, uh, the industry. So we have also, but we also have the notion of AMQP. And th this, uh, there's some differences that we need to be aware of. So if you want, for example, the, the, the exact one reliable messaging kind of thing with your, from your devices, AMQP is your friend. Uh, you have the notion of when, you, when you've read the message, you can do complete, reject, abort on the message, just as you would do, do with service bus. And you also have support of metadata on top of it, so you can use for later queries and, and uh, routing. AMQP is much uh, simpler in th that way. You don't have exactly one. The quality of service is at most one or at least one, and you can set those as you want but you cannot have exactly one. It's also kind of weird that it, if it comes up with a, uh, an error or, or connection problem, it will, it will drop it immediately. Uh, and you have to build in functionality to do reconnect. Um, however, it does support a desired state, as I showed the last uh, demo, and also device methods, which is not um, supported on AMQP. And it, there is a difference also in the subscription model. So where you don't really have the notion of a topic subscription kind of thing in MQTT, you basically just write to whatever queue you, or whatever topic you want to send it to. Um, Clemens Wassers has done a great blog on this where he compares the differences and also his conclusion in this is it's not either or. In many cases, you will end up with both of them uh, for, for the different reasons. Okay, so with that, I think that's my last thing, and uh, there's a shirt for free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.